Hello, hello, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Lovely to see so many of you coming in today. I'm Emma from Small Business Britain, and as someone who absolutely loves Christmas, this webinar is especially exciting because we are talking about how to boost your business this festive season. We have Catherine Early with us today. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Thanks for having me. No problem. Catherine is the founder of the Resilient Retail Club and has run quite a few webinars with us. So I know this is going to be a really, really good one. We are recording today, so don't worry if you miss anything. We'll be sharing a replay link right to your inbox. And there will also be a link for you to sign up to free mentoring sessions if you would like to do so. So make sure that you you click that link and sign up for those. Those are in partnership with Lloyds Bank Academy as well. So really, really valuable to have. Finally, a massive, massive thank you to the Lloyds Bank Academy for their continued support to partner with us on these webinars. They also have so much more, um, more help and resources on their website. So make sure you check those out. Do say hello in the chat. I can see people getting involved already, which is great to see. Also, if you've got some questions, pop them in the Q&A um, and I'll keep an eye on that and come back at the end to ask those to Catherine. That's all from me. So I will hand over to you, Catherine, and I will see you at the end for questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much to everyone and the Small Business Britain team for having me. And also thank you to Lloyds Bank Academy for the session today. My name's Catherine Erdley, and we're going to be talking about how to boost your business this festive season. So what we're going to do, she says once, there we go. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what's ahead for Christmas 2024 and why is it important to prepare. And we're also going to go through five things to think about as you get ready for Christmas. So do come in, say hi, as I said in the chat. Uh, there is also a separate Q&A section. So if you've got a question, do drop it into the Q&A. I will be doing questions at the end. Uh, we will have some time to go through questions. So fear not. Just very briefly, if we've not met before, my name is Catherine Erdley. This is my 24th year in the retail industry. I'm a small business and retail expert and I work with product business owners and I'm proud to have been a small business Britain champion for several years now, as well as somebody who um, speaks on uh, press events and trade events around the country. Basically, everything I do is about making more money in your business. And of course, Christmas is a huge, big part of that. You can find me most frequently over on Instagram where I'm at Resilient Retail Club. So do feel free to come say hi. Or if you have a question that we don't get time to go through today, uh, then you can come say hi or ask me that question afterwards as well. So why do we need to prepare? Well, as we all know, the, the cheesy saying, cheesy, but it's true that if we plan, if we if we fail to plan, then we plan to fail. And so this is absolutely true with Christmas. What happens as business owners, whether we are product business owners or service business owners, it can get very, very busy, very, very noisy at Christmas. So it can get busy for us in our personal lives, busy for us in our business. And the more that we can do to get ourselves ready to go, the better it will be go for us. And it's the you know 11th of October. So I'm not even early in talking about Christmas anymore. <laughs> I, I talk about Christmas more or less from about January onwards. And a lot of the time I'm saying, oh, well, I'm very early talking about Christmas. But at this point, we're not early. In fact, my favorite uh, conversation I had this week, somebody told me that they are working with a big retailer on a secret project that is going to go live for Christmas 2026. So when I tell you that big businesses prep a long time in advance for Christmas, I'm not joking. But even so, even uh, for, for small businesses, this is the perfect time. We've got a little bit of time left before those six golden weeks. So the golden weeks are known as the six weeks in the run up to Christmas. And what I wanted to do before we jumped in was just touch on a few points about what people are saying is ahead for Christmas 2024. So every year I do a roundup episode. I've got a podcast, The Resilient Retail Game Plan. If anybody's interested in hearing more, then I just did an episode a couple of weeks ago now on my Christmas predictions. But basically, I go through all of the predictions about what's going to be happening for spending and trading for Christmas 
And um, the reason it's, as I said, it's important to be focused on those six weeks is because it's not unusual for 50% of your sales to come in in those last six weeks. So if you're a product business in particular, if you are somebody who sells things that are giftable, then it is not uncommon to be getting 50% of your entire annual revenue in those six weeks in the run up to Christmas. And even the service businesses will see peaks around this time as well. So it is definitely worth being aware of what's ahead. So what are we expecting for Christmas 2024? I think the phrase cautious optimism is probably what I have seen most frequently. So Mintel, for example, who do a Christmas gift buying report, um, that's what they're feeling and several other um, trend reports that I, I was looking through. Basically, we're seeing some ease up in consumer confidence. So the first half of the year, the consumer confidence was extremely low. Consumer confidence, basically how likely people are to buy or how good people are feeling about the economy right now, which has a knock-on impact on how likely they are to buy. And that has been something that has been really severely dampened over the last couple of years with cost of living crisis, fuel costs, et cetera, et cetera. But this year we're seeing a slight return to a slightly more optimistic stance for the customer so uh what we're expecting to see for christmas is i don't think anyone thinks this is going to be like a mega mega christmas but previous years i've at similar times i've sat here and said this is a you know people are feeling really really cautious about christmas this year people are feeling cautiously optimistic so all of that to say that we expect to see maybe slight increases on custom spending compared to last year and maybe just a slight sense that people are slightly feeling slightly more ready to spend. We are expecting to see people shopping early, especially younger consumers. So if you're somebody who ha- you know that you have a lot of younger consumers, then be aware of the fact that especially that demographic are expected to buy a a large amount during the um, promotional period in the month of November, which I'll talk about a little bit more later on. So again, another reason to be getting ready early. Uh, What are people going to be looking for? There's a lot of evidence that people, they still want these little luxuries. So it may not be that they've got the biggest budget in the world, but they want whatever they buy to feel really special. They also want personalized experiences and they want to feel personalized service from their from the people that they're buying from. And then in terms of categories in particular, then food and drink, health and beauty and toys are all areas that are particularly um, expected to do well this year. But with all of this, what I would really really urge you to do is to think about your business, think about your products, if you sell them or services, if you sell them and really think about how can you package these up as gifts, because that is by far the main bulk of Christmas buying. And in previous years where we've maybe seen slightly less uh, traction has been on things like self-purchasing for Christmas. So Christmas party outfits, Christmas jewelry, things like that. But the gift giving has stayed more stable and I don't think this year will be any different. So, again, just always think to yourself, what can I what can I uh, sell that's giftable? And we'll touch on that a little bit more. But that's just a quick outlook overlook overview. Can't speak this morning. Overview of what we're expecting for Christmas 2024. So. The five things we're going to think about getting ready for Christmas are looking at last year's lessons, setting yourself a goal, identifying your hero products. I'm going to talk a fairly fairly large amount about promotional plans. And then we're going to have a look at um, things like looking ahead and planning workload, that kind of thing. So last year's lessons, what I love to do when I'm planning Christmas with a client working with somebody in my membership is I like to start with last year so if this is your first year trading then this is going to be more difficult but if you're watching today and you have traded previous Christmases even if you've not done an awful lot that's Christmas focused in your business then you still want to start with looking back so that you know where to to build on for your plans for this year And the things that you want to be really thinking about with your last year's lessons is uh, when did you actually see sales peaks or when did you feel, even if you didn't offer Christmas 
a Christmas offer previously? When did you get a peak in demand for your services or peak in demand for your products? Where are you seeing people coming to you most frequently? Uh, it's often, I think, an even smaller window than people expect. It does tend to feel now like we, we're almost like waiting towards that towards the second half of November before you really see a push. And then, of course, it depends on your business model. If you have got an e-commerce business, you may have to even you may even be obliged to switch off your shipping halfway through no uh, December so that people are definitely going to get things on time for Christmas. Um, but if you're a bricks and mortar, then you may have a sales peak that runs all the way up to Christmas Eve. If you're a services, for example, a lot of people in beauty, uh, hairdressing, things like that, they see peaks all the way up until um christmas as well because people have events and things like that so get really clear on when you are expecting to actually be busy what you've seen previously and then secondly think about what what did you sell last year what were you selling at this time of year what services what products were the best sellers at that time of year so that you you're starting from a point of understanding what people are actually buying from you Another interesting question to ask yourself around this one is what were people asking for? So sometimes you've got the products that people want um, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you know that you've got customers coming and asking you for things and maybe you just never got yourself organized. Maybe people were asking you about gift cards and you just didn't have a gift card. Maybe you people were asking if you did bo gift boxes and you didn't have that set up. So what were you getting asked for? And simultaneously, what did you sell yourself? What were you selling mostly at that time of year? And then the third thing to think about was, were there things that you saw other people selling at this time of year that you thought, actually, that could have been really good for me and I didn't, um, I, you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't have it myself. So let's say you're a yoga studio and you saw that some people were doing a gift certificate with a, uh, a yoga mat bundle or a candle bundle or something like that. And you were like, oh, that was a really good idea, but I didn't have it. So thinking about the what happened last year, so what you were selling, what you could have sold, uh, what you were asked for. The other thing that I always like to start with when we're planning out Christmas, and incidentally, this exercise here, the best time of year to do this exercise is actually January. So in January, I would love for you to take 10, 15 minutes and make these notes and put them somewhere safe so that when you come to do your Christmas 2025 planning, you've already got a real leg up because you've already looked into this and identified it. So you want to make sure that you go through and you think about uh, any issues that you had last year. So where did you struggle when it came to Christmas? Um, were there suppliers that let you down? Some of your partners like um, the courier postage, like where did you have things that were issue? Did you not have enough people? Did you not have enough space? Like all of those things are well worth remembering because it can be a little bit like, um, you know it's like we we lose our memory when it comes to these things we think oh yeah I think Christmas was all right but actually it was really stressful because of various different things so when you're planning making your plans for the following year it's always really good to start with like where do we have where did I have issues and and identifying those and then what can you do now so let's say for example you didn't have enough people or you really could have used extra pair of hands for the two last two weeks or well, who could you talk to now could you get them trained up on standby have those conversations with people if they're willing to be flexible um, but get them all prepared ready to go and shown the ropes so that when you are busy you can just bring them in as opposed to being really stressed and then the last question I always like to ask when it comes to Christmas is where did I have too much and not enough? So, for example, did you have a whole, um, you know, did you create a whole load of gift bundles and then nobody actually wanted them from you um, versus where did you get asked for things that you'd run out of? So it's always a good question to reflect back on, say, to, where did I have too much and where did I have not enough? Um, because, you know, sometimes we try things in our businesses. We think, oh, I think what people really want is a 
is a you know a, a special card that they can buy from me that they can gift and or they want like a special package that they can buy for their um for services over the christmas time period and that actually wasn't something that people really went for so that is useful to know as well useful to note down so we're trying to what we're trying to do really here is we're trying to take the emotion out of it it's not about oh i really messed up last year or i could have done things differently or oh i did that thing that didn't work that's not really what we're going for here we're going for as trying to be as objective as possible what drove money what didn't drive money uh, where could I have where could I have done things differently? That's really what we're looking for. So that is your starting point for your plan for this year. Then the next thing to do is to set yourself a sales goal. So um, so a uh, good question. What do you, if you don't have last year's data, then I think then this, this is it is more tricky. Um, I would start with well, what have you learned so far um, in if you're totally new this year, what have you learned so far? What do you think is going to happen at Christmas? Um, and therefore, do you think that um, you're going to, you know, what are you expecting to happen? I think that's a, that's a reasonable question to ask yourself because you can see what you think is going to happen. And that also comes into your goal setting. If you've never done a Christmas before, you're going to have to set yourself a goal um based on just what you think is going to happen do you think you're going to get an uplift at christmas do you think you're not going to get an uplift at christmas um all of those things so uh i'd say if you don't have a, any history then you just basically start from where you're at and um it's still worth thinking like have you had other um peak times during the year so maybe christmas isn't your isn't your peak time or maybe it is but you've had previous peaks at other times in the year what was it that broke in the business when you were busy uh, what do you think might be an issue this time so it's again you're just trying to do as best you can to kind of predict because it's always good to try and predict now when we've got a little bit of time to do something about it um than it is you know like oh yeah that time we got really busy and and then I had to take um you know, I I had to, I was working till 2am because I didn't have support in this area of the business. Okay, well, what could I do now to, to avoid that? Uh, then the next thing to do is set yourself a goal. So plan out your sales, um, have a think about what you want your total sales to be, and then break it down by month and by week. This is really useful if you are particularly if you're expecting there to be a rush at Christmas, because this way you can check capacity. So let's say, for example, um, you run um, wreath making workshops, which I know a lot of people do uh, around this time of year. Um, so you would then want to say, right, well, how much money do I want to take? How many tickets is that? How many places do I need to sell? Um, can I actually run that many events? Do I have that many spaces? So all of this, again, it's about trying to get it from like a sort of general sense of, oh, I want to do well at Christmas. I want to make the most of it to making it really super concrete and specific. What do I want to sell? When do I think I'm going to sell it? And what capacity issues might I have? So it's well worth going through that and um, setting yourself goals so you can sense check them against uh, the support that you have in the business okay mm -hmm. okay so the all important question number three what are you actually going to sell so this is also known as identifying your hero products so your hero products or services are what you're effectively going to build your Christmas campaigns around. So, for example, you might be um, some if you're a restaurant, then it might be your Christmas menu. If you're a product business, then it's going to be the products that you're going to feature on your homepage or in your emails and your social media that are you effectively what you think people are most likely to buy for gifts if you are somebody who who offers um, hairdressing services, for example, it might be, you know, what are your key appointments? Are you going to have packages around getting ready for Christmas parties or things like that? So or is it going to be your gifting options like your uh, gift vouchers, for example? So identify what you actually want to what you want to push and this is really this really helps to streamline what all of your messaging and marketing around Christmas, because what you don't want to be saying is kind of like, oh, come see us. It's Christmas. It's almost like, OK, well, why? What's the purpose? What are you actually offering that people will want? 
And some of that is thinking, some of that may be really super obvious for you, depending on your business. And some of that may be something that you have to really think about, like what do people want at Christmas? Do they want peace of mind? Do they want relaxation? Do they want gifting options? Do they want something really super seasonal that just gets them in the Christmas mood? Like Knowing your customer, what is it that you can offer them at Christmas? And then build that around build around that so that's also where your sales projections comes in handy so again if you're a product business then having your sales projected and working out okay well how many what do I want to take like how many of these items do I actually need but equally so if you have a sales goal and you want to sell a number of places in a workshop or at an event then again that helps you just sense check it now the key thing here is it doesn't always have to be Christmas focused. In fact, a lot of the time it's it's not even necessarily the best thing if it is. So for a product business, if you have got a candle that is your best selling fragrance all year round, then that can be your hero product at Christmas because that's the thing that people are most likely to want to buy from you. You don't have to put it, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to have a snowman or a Christmas tree or, or a, something like that on it. Um, and similarly, you know, if you have offer massage services and, and, you know, relaxing aromatherapy massage is your best selling is the, your number one service, then you don't have to do a Christmas themed one. Um, I mean, that might be interesting, but you know, like it doesn't have to be, it could just be that that's what you, that's the thing that, you know, people come to you for. So you build your, your marketing around how this is the perfect thing for you at this busy time of year. So you can relax. So you want to get your head around what are people most likely to buy from me? What, um, you know, what can I offer? Build, basically be able to build your marketing around that. Um, and as I said, it doesn't have to be Christmas focused. You could look at ways to tweak something to make it more seasonal and interesting. But what you don't want to do is the main thing is you don't want to end up with loads of, say, Christmassy stock that you can't shift later on in the year um, because or or spending a lot of money and creating something that is just for Christmas um, when something that is your best seller all year round could do. So this is also your opportunity to have a think about, well, maybe I don't have anything. <laughs> maybe I don't have anything that fits. I don't have anything that would be suitable for gifting. Um, I don't really have anything that is, you know, set up well for um, people to gift or something that people would even want at Christmas. So then that's when you would look at, and we've got a little bit of time, but you could think about, can you create or come up with a package or a service or a product that would be something that people would want to gift um and uh most product areas uh somehow some way or most businesses will somehow some way will have something that you can gift um or you know again like a christmas experience something like that it there are usually there's usually some way of doing it and uh if you're really stuck for your business then feel free to ask me at the end because i love coming up with ideas so You've got your, you've looked back at last year, you know what you want to take this year, you've identified what you want to focus in on. So now we're going to talk about um, promotional plans. So um, it's, it's a really interesting one because obviously promotions and small businesses, it can be um, a bit of a minefield and a lot of people feel under a lot of pressure from discounting um, and can make and can feel like this is really difficult, a really difficult area. So what I would say to you is your think about promotions as not having to necessarily mean a discount. You don't have to be giving away money and certainly small businesses are not set up for the kind of discounting shenanigans that you see from, for example, some of the big retailers. They have a completely different business model that they are actually buying things in at a much higher margin so that they can discount. And I think, to be honest, the customer becomes more aware of this kind of thing. Uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't really feel very, very authentic or very honest a lot of the time. So that said, so, so first off, I would say, you know, take from this section what you will. If you don't do any discounting, any promotions at any point, then that's absolutely fine. 
But I like to think about promotion as being a conversation that you can have with your customer. So it's a reason for you to send them an email, to be on social media. And this is your opportunity to map that out throughout the fourth quarter. So that when it comes to Christmas, I like to look at the whole 13 weeks as in one go so that you don't end up having too many messages in one week and nothing to talk about another week. So we look at them across the entire period to space it appropriately. And then that also allows you to start thinking about what marketing imagery you might need or other marketing assets. So uh, the first thing to say as well is that a lot of the time a new product or service launch is its own promotion. So that is a new conversation that you can have with your customer. So if you have, for example, limited edition or limited space Christmas events, then that that might be your promotion. That might be the thing that you're talking about for most of the fourth quarter because it's, you know, you've got your launch and then, you know, it's selling out, grab your tickets, that kind of thing. It may not be that you're doing any kind of discount. But for other people, you may have one time where you're launching your Christmas range, your Christmas offers, uh, and then you do need to come up with other messaging at other times of the of the quarter. So I don't know why it doesn't always move on. <laughs> Here we go. I also like to think about there being a spectrum when it comes to promotions. So on the one hand, you've got things that are what I say, like more premium. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment that tend to be nice, but aren't necessarily big sales drivers. And then you've got things that are high sales drivers, but feel a little bit more distressed. So in if you're wondering what that means in practice, then something like this is what I would say is feels quite premium. Um, so it's it's um this is from Liberty, I think. Yeah, Liberty. So it's like uh limited off money off offers. And that feels like it doesn't feel like, oh my goodness, Liberty must be in trouble. They sent me this email. You know, it just feels like, oh, this is kind of nice. I'm getting a bit of money off some things. And then the other end of the spectrum is this very much the kind of like what we call in the retail business red sale. So like a real like money off. Although that said, you can actually do sale in a way that feels a little bit more premium. But generally speaking, when it comes to promotions, you've got that those different ends of the spectrum. So here are some examples of things that you could think about, um, because the idea is we're trying to create a perfect blend between different types of messaging so that you've always got something to talk about all the way through the Christmas period because it, it feels like it's a long time we say Christmas like it's one thing but you know that's like you know the fourth quarter is 13 weeks so it's useful to have these different messages pre-planned out and pre-prepped so that you know what you're going to be talking about each week with your customers um I would like to think about discounts. So if you are going to be thinking about discounts at all or any special offers, then um, I like to think about them like spices. So a little bit can make it interesting and too much ruins the dish. So when it comes to creating this whole different messages, we're really talking about your marketing messages week on week, then it may be that you drop in the occasional bit of spice, but definitely if we all know what it's like when you see a business and they're just discounting repeatedly over and over and over. It does not feel good. Um, sometimes I call it the gap trap. So you don't want to fall into the gap trap and just have these constant discounts that mean that nobody wants to buy from you at full price. Um, but equally so, you know, you could sprinkle in a little bit of something. All of this, though, I think is much better when you do it ahead of time and you plan it all out. So you're really clear. So you're not kind of waking up one day and thinking, oh, shoot, I should really do something. So well, let's go through some various different types of promotions. Now, not all of these will be relevant to everybody, but what I, the reason I wanted to go through these was just to show you that the vast variety of different things that you can do. So very simply, you could do a competition or giveaway. It's not going to be like a big sales driver, but it can be a nice way of getting um, email addresses before the peak as well um, which is really super useful because then you can email people and tell them about your products and services um, it's also really good for collaborating with other people it's not um, as I said it's not going to drive huge amounts of sales but it also can be a really nice feel good uh, way of talking to your customer and um, I feel like it's good padding so if you've planned out your whole fourth quarter and you've looked at when you're launching your products or services 
what you want to talk about each week and you feel like there's a gap and you're just like, I don't really know what I'm going to talk about this week, then stick in a competition or a giveaway and uh, it gives you a message for that week. Perks. So these are these feel really nice. Um, free gift wrapping, upgraded shipping, gift with purchase, free shipping, um, you know, free card with a gift voucher, just some kind of little perk or extra. Um, if you've got, I would say as well, for all of these, these things that we're going to be talking about, these promotions, have a think about the people on your email list because a nice thing to do uh, or a really useful thing to do when you're looking, planning out your promotions for the Christmas time period is to think about how you can make it extra special for your VIPs. So if somebody's on your mailing list, what do they get that's extra? And then you can talk about that and, and market your mailing list as a perk and see if you can get them on there. So, for example, if it's a competition, do you give an extra entry to people who are on your mailing list? If you've got a perk like this, you know, is it you this free shipping this weekend? But actually, if you're on my mailing list, you get free shipping. You get extra couple of days of free shipping. So all basically for every single message that you create, think about what's the layer for your VIPs, your email subscribers. And then don't forget to tell people about it. So say, oh, hey, guys, you know, get on my mailing list. We're going to give you extra a couple of days. Or, you know, if you've got bricks and mortar promises, be telling people when they come in. Oh, yes, we're going to be doing gift with um, patches over the weekend, but we've got an extra special one if you're on our mailing list, whatever it might be. But just thinking about the extra layer for those special people, because then you're building that trust with your warmest part of your audience and also gives you a reason to grow your mailing list at this time of year, which is really handy. So bounce backs. So this is a good one for um, encouraging people to come back later. So it's something like, this weekend only, a free £5 gift voucher to put towards your next purchase. This can help drive purchases into the new year. It's really good for services, um, you know, hospitality, people who tend to be quieter in January. Um, and it can also help if you don't have capacity to offer, you know, additional things during the run up to Christmas. But you could incentivize people to buy with the understanding that they could come back and get a uh, money off in the new year for example um i think these are really nice sort of community builders really nice um sort of uh like thank yous to your customers again they're not going to be like massive sales drivers but it could just be a, again a really nice message it doesn't feel distressed it doesn't make people wonder why you're always offering discounts it's something that says thank you for um you know please and encourages repeat purchases again is it something that it's slightly better if you're on on the email list um something like that but it's it's definitely a good one again if you're looking to if you're looking for another message spend more get more so these are the same as really sort of discount percentage off but for some reason the customer interprets these as a little bit nicer feeling so it's like a gift to you type thing um so it's like you know five pounds off when you spend 50 10 pounds off when you spend 100 these type of promotions are good for encouraging higher price points so again if you're somebody who offers services and you do a block of services and you people can have a bit of a discount if they buy the block things like that that's always a good way of encouraging higher price points um and again it's just another option for if you want to have a whole variety of different messaging across this time period uh it can be another one which doesn't feel super um it doesn't it doesn't it feels nice it feels more premium um, and equally so it is um you know it is it is giving people a discount and it does it can help push up your average transaction value which is always helpful multi-buys um so this would be specifically um for products really but you know bundles discounts so buy one get one free buy one get one half price or three for two so loads and loads of big retailers for example will do a three for two on things like their christmas decorations and wrap and all the rest of it uh it's a good one if you've got products that people often buy together and you want to again increase your units and basically just get people to buy more of, of a certain type of product um 
it's again it is a it's it's another form of discount you know buy one get one free is the same as a 50 percent discount but somehow uh you're encouraging people to buy more units but um again all of these especially these ones that was we're moving into the more actual money off things these are the kind of things you wouldn't you wouldn't do too many of these but it's just another option for you to think about and then you've got the discounts so the one that i'm really not fond of um is the blanket discount so the percentage off everything um, this gets overused a lot by businesses and I always get nervous for businesses when I see them running this kind of thing repeatedly. Um, this is the kind of thing that some people just never, ever do. And that's absolutely fine. And some people, on the other hand, will do it twice a year. And one of the times that they do it is around Black Friday. So if that works for you and for your business, then then go for it. Um, I prefer targeted if you're going to be doing it. Um, it's, this is especially important if you have stock and you need to move specific items that aren't, haven't been moving for you. You a promotion, it looks like it's for the customer, but it's really for you as the business owner. You want to use it to shape the customer's behavior. So that's why it's good to do it targeted if you've got a product business. And then you've either you even you also could do something like a staggered one, which is you'll see. Uh, you see quite a lot of big retailers do this because it allows them to have a higher percentage off and it feels more enticing. So up to 30 percent off everything, for example, legally speaking, as long as 10 percent of your products are at that highest level, that 30 percent off, then you can say up to 30 percent off. Um, but, um, you know, again, some people for some people this stuff will just be things that they never ever do and that's absolutely fine and other people this will be something that they do and they choose to do it one time and it's this time of year because that's when everyone's you know in the buying mood so you have to make that decision and then we've got this red sale so red sale is like your real stock clearance sale again product businesses only but um this this one generally is something that will happen um post christmas so boxing day so you've We've gone through a whole for different variety of different things that you could do that you could offer. Um, so you can map map that out by week. So get yourself a piece of paper or your calendar or a spreadsheet and put in the the week commencing date for each week between now and Christmas, and then work out what is your message going to be, um, and what is your promotion. So again, promotion and message. It doesn't have to be a discount. It could be that actually what I'm going to be talking about is my um you know my event launch right that's that's going to be what i'm talking about but just make sure you've just got the very simplest this is the week this is what i'm going to be talking about and it helps you get it really clear make that decision now so you're not knee jerking when it's november and everyone's doing everything and you think oh should i be doing some kind of message and now i've already thought this through i've already gone through and i've mapped it out you know choose a variety of different messages um, if you've got loads of different things you're launching, loads of different things to talk about, then you may not need to do any kind of promotions. You might all your messaging might be um, about the different things that you're launching or focusing on each week. Um, make sure you've got that extra layer. So you could have three columns. You can have the week. You can have what your message is that week and then have another column, which is this is what I'm going to do for my email subscribers, for my VIPs. So this is what they get that's additional so that they, you know, do they get early access? If you've got limited number of tickets, do you give them early access? And then make sure you're promoting, you're talking about these, even if it's a, um, if it is a discount, make sure you give it as much excitement and love as if you're launching a new product, because that's how you get impact and that's how you get people to, to participate. So what about Black Friday? So, um, I mean, I think this is the kind of thing that strikes the fear into the hearts of small businesses, this kind of horrible, like in your face, really super deep discounts. It just feels so uh, uh, unaligned with a, a way a lot of people run their businesses. So I'm a big believer, though, that, you know, do what you want to do. You could do absolutely nothing. Um I would suggest if you're not doing anything for Black Friday, it is worth telling your customers that just because a lot of people are going to wait and see what's going on. I think that, you know, fair enough. Um, you know, if it's Tuesday, the week before Black Friday, are you going to buy something at full price when there's a possibility it could get discounted? Um, possibly not. So if you're not going to discount it, you could say people just so you know, this is our, you know, this is 
don't look out for black friday discounts we aren't going to be doing them i think that can be turned into quite a positive message um something that your customers can understand you could choose to do something but tie it in instead with one of the many indie biz celebrations that go on of course small business saturday um indie week color friday you hear all kinds of different ways that people spin it so you could do something like that um and which you know small business saturday is, is not the same timing as black friday it's the i think the following week either the next week or the two weeks after um so um you know that could be something that you align yourself with instead because it feels much more nicer messaging uh i've seen really great charity tie-ins people doing um lucy and yak the dungaree brand they are really excellent at this they are really good at um they do a charity donation instead of a discount on black friday and it, they really talk about it they talk about what the money's going to they talk about uh who you know how many it's all about sending girls to school in india and uh, so you know so that you, throughout the weekend they're telling you how many girls they're sending to school and this kind of thing and and it's a real feel good factor or choose from some or choose from one of the promotional types you could do a free gift with purchase you could do a buy one get one you could do a free shipping this weekend only you know it's entirely it's your business it's up to you i don't think there is a right or a wrong answer other than i wouldn't suggest doing like 40 percent off everything <laughs> you know i i think that um yeah I, I i think that you've got to do what feels right for you and whether that's if if now's the right time to participate and have a 20 percent off discount that you do once a year and your customer really knows that you don't do discounts but this one time you are so they're going to really jump on it yeah then fine if you don't have if that doesn't work for you and you don't want to do anything then don't do anything so that's my those those, those are my thoughts um, and then just finally, just before we come on to questions, um, just if you're thinking about uh, what you need to be doing ahead of Christmas, um, obviously we're now in October, so some of these things are past, but just things to be thinking about would be prepping your marketing, um, recruiting, any admin that you can do to get out of the way. If Christmas is your peak time, then anything that you can do basically to get uh, admin tasks or anything that's going to take up time out of November and December will be really beneficial because really in November and December, what you want to be doing is focusing on selling. Uh, you want to be focusing on delighting your customers and selling. And that is really what you want to be doing in those months. You don't want to be doing anything else. Um, if you're planning a big, if, if Christmas is at all important to your business and you're currently planning some kind of big business change between now and the end of the year, I would strongly suggest moving it to January. Um, it's not really the time of year to be digging into that kind of thing if you can possibly avoid it. I mean, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you have no choice. Um, but if you can possibly push things, something off to 2025 at this point, then I would highly suggest it. And so there you have it. So uh, start with reviewing next year. Make yourself a plan. Set yourself some goals. Choose what you want to base your marketing around based on the products and services that you believe people really want from you at Christmas. Make sure you plan your promotions and then have a think about what you can get done now so that your November and December is calmer. And do your own Christmas shopping as well. That's uh, my top tip. Can you can you get your own Christmas shopping done <laughs> now so that you're not simultaneously trying to do all of that stuff as well as go through the business being in a busy time? So, um, just to say that uh, you can find me uh, uh, at Resilient Retail Club, um, you can find me on LinkedIn and you can have a listen to my podcast if you have a product business and would like to hear more. And um, just a reminder to say that um, we've got online learning modules from Lloyds Bank Academy. Also, I'd like to remind everybody that just by attending today's session, you have access to two hours of free mentoring is that correct yes yeah. <laughs> yes so do make sure you take care that you do that um is this that's yeah. the last slide so yes any questions thank you so much Catherine that was such a great session and I feel like I want to go and do my Christmas shopping already <laughs> <laughs> you got full yeah they, I think you you guys should you you get so busy in the run-up don't you so true <laughs> lots of opportunities to support small businesses for us though so it's, it's mm. 
So we have got some lovely questions. Um, the first one is from Kerry and she's asked, is it worth Google ads within the Christmas period if our budgets will be a lot smaller than the big retailers? Oh, um, good question. Our ads do get much more expensive in the fourth quarter. Um, I would say if you have not started ads, uh, I it, it's not really a great time to start um because you know you've got to go through that learning period with ads and if you have not got um if you've not had that opportunity uh then you it, it can be hard to start um if you are already running ads then i think i just keep an eye on your costs if it starts looking like it's just going up and going crazy then you know it is it is tough it's a very expensive time of year for ads it's a very noisy time of year um everyone's maybe yeah very when other people aren't thinking about it maybe Ex exactly yeah yeah awesome who answers your question Kerry um another question is do you have any ideas for a new business that provides parent coaching oh so parent coaching um I would say there's definitely, I mean, there's definitely something about like getting through Christmas with your sanity intact. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming, I don't know if you, I don't know the person who asked that question, if you offer one-to-one -one or if it's like um more like a one-to-many, you know, like do you offer courses and things like that? But I think if I were you, I would definitely be thinking about what does my customer need right now? And at Christmas, especially for small children it's like it's all it's all about how do you create a magical christmas for your children without losing your <laughs> without losing it yourself <laughs> so i think you know what can you offer around that can you offer a special session for people can you offer sessions where you help them plan out what christmas how they you know how they want to be through christmas what their intention is um you know because it can feel very overwhelming when you've got kids and it, there's so much pressure on it like making a perfect Christmas for your children but as a parent it can be a stressful time as well with sickness and the expense of it all so I'm sure that I I always like to just um, put myself in my um, customers shoes and actually a great exercise is if you spent 10 minutes just writing out like a day in the life of your ideal customer at Christmas, like what is your, what are they thinking about? What are they struggling with? And I'm sure if you do that, you'll be like, oh, okay, what can I do to help? Right. I can offer, yeah, offer you all calm Christmas sessions. You know, I'm sure a lot of people would be up, would be up for that. Definitely. Oh, I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Another question is, I'm a very small eBay business and I've had some trouble for smaller occasions and now Christmas is coming up. I'm a little bit worried about getting traffic to my eBay store. Do you have any tips? Um, I mean, I think have a look at, I mean, with the, with the platforms, I think a lot of it's to do with keywords. A lot of it's to do with what are people searching for. Um, I know that with, there are various different tools for eBay that you can use to look at like what is selling in your niche and what and then I would go take a look at those listings and I'll go and see what kind of words they're using. Um, so, for example, I don't know what it is that you sell, but, you know, are people looking for like practical stocking stuffers or what is it that pe people are going to be putting something in to try and find your products? So a lot of the time it's you trying to work backwards from that to work out what that is. Um, and I definitely would be looking to update your listings now because often it will take six six weeks or so for things to kind of actually get picked up. So I would do what research you can, have a look in your category, what's what appears to be selling, um, and then looking at very specifically what words um, do we think people are using to search for those items. Ah, that's great advice. I heard somewhere else as well that eBay always favors people who use like buy from the platform themselves. So maybe oh, really, yeah. So I think some people often have you know like their personal account and their business account. So maybe ah. shopping as well. That might, <laughs> <laughs> if in doubt, go shopping. Yeah, that's, the, that's just general answer. Excellent. <laughs> Another question: Any ideas for a company trying to break into the market? I haven't got more than three people on my mailing list and I can't afford ads. 
it's an, uh, a speciality coffee shop. Oh, lovely. So I guess a little bit of a saturated market, maybe. So, okay. So speciality coffee shop. I'm not sure. Do you have um, bricks and mortar? Do you have... Uh, um, yeah, so so that would be one thing. Um, the other, so if you've got bricks and mortar, then it would be about obviously you're trying to engage with the local community. If you're online, um, and you're trying to you're trying to break into the market, I would the question that I always ask uh, is who else has a relationship with the people I want to reach? So who are you aimed at? What is your USP? Is it, for example, that you are, you know, fair trade coffee or your coffee from a certain region or it's very high quality for the price or it's roasted in a certain way or something like that? But thinking about what makes it you unique, what you do, think about who else. So, so who else? Who do you appeal to? Do you appeal to people who are are eco-conscious are you appealing to people who are real foodies because this is like the best coffee ever you know that kind of thing um and then you go and look for who might have a similar audience so is there a baker as a you know a baker that has you think actually could we do something where it's like our coffee and their cinnamon buns for example um it's getting near it's getting their snack time so I'm thinking about cinnamon buns um but you know it's like it's thinking of like that so the the three ways you can grow your audience is you can buy it you can build it or you can borrow it and so that means you can pay you know paying for ads or influencers or things like that um you can build it through your own um ingenuity content marketing um or just like literally going out there, meeting people, networking, meeting people, um, or you can borrow it, which is to do with collaborating. I'm a big fan of collaborating with other businesses. If then, and if they're you know are roughly around the same size as you, it's not too much of an ask to say, well, could we do something together? And even if they've only got five people and three of them come and follow you afterwards, then you're still growing it piece by piece by piece. So that's where I would start if I were you. And I think also just, especially at the beginning, just getting out, like, can you go to every small business networking that you could possibly go to and just try and meet people and talk to them about your coffee, um, you know, bring samples along, just just basically trying to meet other people, make connections um, and see if you can find people who there's synergy with them and then you can get uh, in front of their audience. Fabulous. Great advice. And while you were speaking there, lots of people in the chat were keen to collaborate. So I hope that. that Yes. Love it. (laughs) Yes. Love it. Love it. Is um, from a portrait photographer who would love to learn how to promote their services. Mm. They offer albums, but it would be, um, but this would be late and the business, there isn't albums that this would be shipped late and for businesses there is no need for products only a digital service have you got any ideas so they've never promoted for christmas before oh well i have bought from i mean i've bought christmas portraits before and uh, you know when my kids were younger uh, i remember a couple of years there was a photographer who would do do service where you could basically get a picture for your christmas card um Yeah. So that was, you know, that's a, if you, if you're a portrait photographer, why do people need, it's all, all of it really stems down, stems back to what would people need at Christmas? Um, Yes. I mean, yes, there is the gifting element for sure. You could gift somebody, uh, you know, you could gift your loved one, a album of photos of you or gift yourself that, but um, you know, do they need, yeah. Could you do like a mini portrait session where it's like, uh you know get your christmas card snap here and it's you know you can just send them then the image it's not necessarily like you've got to then print the album and yes okay it's going to be a lower price point than um than for example doing like a full shoot but could you try that something it could also be like a good tester as well like if somebody comes to you for a christmas card snap which is less you know, it's less of a a big commitment, then they maybe would, um, you know, be, have you in mind for the future if they wanted more photos. 
Definitely. I like that idea. Yeah, we'll have like a little event, you know, mulled wine, get your picture taken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do a, um, I'm sure lots of families do this, like a Christmas calendar. And every uh-huh. year, or, and we have talked about doing it professionally because sometimes it's, you know, it's not the best quality. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or like the Christmas jumper picture, right? Everyone's wearing their Christmas jumper or something or. Unfortunately, I've got two teenagers now, so I'm not sure how much I'd have to pay them if I wanted them to to, to pose for a photo. But, um, you know, when they were little, we did it for sure. So next one's from Emily. I have entered competitions for a small business where you get an entry for each activity. It was something like you follow it on Facebook, Twitter, newsletter, et cetera. Yeah. I would like to something similar for my eBay shop as I have Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest and for people to save me as an eBay seller. Mm, okay yeah yeah you could do something like that for sure um you would have to communicate I forget with eBay I think you can put things in the the orders right I think so you could you could certainly do that and then probably what you'd need to do is I mean there sometimes there are if for example if you have people comment on your Instagram post there is there are little websites and things where you can get it to work out you know to put everyone into a draw but if you just want to do like a draw of so let's say you said to people I want you to save me as an eBay seller and then for all the people that did you just could put their name into there's a website called wheel of names (laughs) and then spin that and then pick somebody at random so uh yeah it's it would it could be a little bit clunkier to do it like that, but there's no reason why you couldn't ask people to do that and to to do that. So, okay, follow me and be in with a chance to win. Yeah, definitely. And especially, you know, if you maybe offered a gift for people, people love, win, you know, winning things that they could yeah. maybe or re-gift potentially with Christmas coming up. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think with all of these things as well, just try it, you know, like try lots of different things. If it doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. You may have to try a few different things till you see the ones that really get traction with your customers. But, you know, why not give it a go? Definitely. Cool. Is there any more any more questions for anyone? We've got almost finished the session. Uh, let's see. I Never. see lots of people offering to. Um, yeah. Do you have any final tips, Catherine, final thoughts? I mean, I think that the key thing is, you know, again, put yourself in your customer's shoes. What do they, what would they want from you at Christmas? What can you do to to tweak things to make it more Christmas focused? Um, Just try it. It's not the end of the world. Like if you don't get it, don't get it completely right. Like it's about learning and adjusting and make sure that you do that in January. Sit down in January and make notes about what worked, what didn't work and your thoughts. Plus, the other thing as well is that it's really useful when everybody is bombarding you with their Christmas offers and their Christmas marketing, you know, Keep an eye out on the things that um, I always like to look at the emails that I opened, the marketing emails. I'm always like, hmm, why did I open that? It's always a good question to ask yourself because it really gets you into that customer's mindset. Like what, what would make me open an email? So look at the things that make you open. Look at the things that make you click. Look at the things that make you stop into a shop. Um, Look at the things that you yourself think, oh, that was a really good message. Keep yourself like a little swipe file, you know, just screenshot things copy and paste into a document whatever it is um or you know tear things out of a magazine if you see something that you think is good messaging because the best time to do research for next year's christmas is when you're being bombarded with christmas messaging um so kind of gather it all up use it always have that in the back of your mind how could i use this for my business what could i do next year um, and then in january sit down and go right this is what i learned this year this is what worked well. This is what didn't work well. This is what I want to try next year because I've seen all of these things and they look really interesting. Okay, these are some key dates. Like well, this year, I really left it too late. This year, I want to, in June, I want to start um, looking at my Christmas range or look, scoping out my Christmas events. Um, uh, and so put those dates in your diary. And then, you know, if you do that in January, then you can forget about it for the rest of the year. And when it comes to June or whenever it is you've decided to kick things off, you've got you're so much further ahead um and the more you do it every year you'll tweak things and something will work and doesn't work and you know you'll just refine it and refine it until you've found a formula that works so 
if you've never done it before in your business, just try things, just give it a go. And uh, who knows? Who knows what you'll find? And um, but yeah, this is when people it's like a whole year people are holding their breath and holding their money. And then at this year, they're there's this time of year, they eventually just get to the point where they're like, yep, I need things. Let's, let me start buying. So you just want to be there when that happens. Yeah, definitely. Oh, thank you so much. We have one super speedy quick question, if you don't mind, just before we yeah. go, which is what is the best way to reach out to corporates to suggest using our products to gift their employees? Oh, great question. Um, I think pull together a PDF of something, uh, you know, just really quickly explaining what it is that you do. Um, you are going to have to do just like a lot of knocking on doors. Um, do your research, work out who the best person is. Is it the HR head, you know, who's somebody's been tasked with buying Christmas gifts for people and it's probably a massive pain in their butt. So like, what can you do to say, like, I'm here, I'm going to make it easy for you. These are the products I've got. This is why it's great. Um, you know, it's made in the UK or it's a super high quality. Or, this is what other people have said about it. If you've got any sort of testimonials or anything like that, um, uh, any any proof basically that people love your products if you've won any awards if you've had any press like include all of that um and you know sometimes it's worth trying to do a little bit of like if you order before the end of october you can have a you know a slight uh, you yeah. know maybe a slight discount something like that uh or free shipping um but basically you want to be friendly helpful tell them how great your products are um and yeah, be prepared for a lot of people to not respond to you, but just try it. I, a local, local's a good one to start with. Definitely start with your local businesses and see if you can build a connection based on the fact that you're based in the same area um, to, to start from there. Fabulous. Oh, Ooh. thank you so much. We have come to the end of the hour, but thank you everyone for joining and Catherine for such an excellent session. Um, as we mentioned, this will, this has been recorded, so you'll get an email um, with all sorts of links and things, and especially to sign up to mentoring. So make sure you do that. Thank you again to Lloyd's Bank Academy for making this happen. And I Thanks hope you for having me. Have a great day. Thanks. All. Bye. Bye.